Welcome back. We spend a lot of money to keep our houses at a nice comfy temperature. So it makes a lot of sense that we pay close attention to our climate control system. That's probably why one of the first big deal smart home devices was a thermostat. But for 250 bucks, I bet we can DIY ourselves something just as good for a whole lot less. So in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to build your own smart thermostat. The hardest part is going to be thinking of a clever name. Let's start out by talking about what makes a thermostat smart. For one thing, a smart thermostat needs to be accessible remotely so that you can adjust the temperature from anywhere, anytime you want. I don't even want to think about how much money I've spent heating and cooling our house when it's been empty. That brings up another really important feature for our smarto stat. It needs to be able to interact with all of our other smart home devices. The most important is definitely presence detection, so that when nobody's home, the thermostat can adjust itself automatically and save me some rupees. And finally, the feature that all the big brand thermostat makers are really pushing in their marketing materials is the ability to make complicated schedules, which include different settings for daytime and nighttime, in the morning versus in the afternoon, different days of the week, and different months of the year. Good news. All of those things are totally achievable with our DIYostat. So let's get to building it. For this homemade smart thermostat, I'm going to use a D1 Mini, three relay modules, and an AM2302 temperature and humidity sensor. The D1 Mini is going to run Tasmoda, big surprise there, and all the really cool smart home stuff is going to happen through Home Assistant. What? You've never heard of Home Assistant? <sighs> that link's for you. It's time to put Tasmoda on our D1 Mini. You've probably seen me do this before, but if you haven't, here we go again real quick. First, go to the ESP Easy GitHub page, and under Releases, grab this ESP Easy Mega zip file. Download it, save it, and extract it. Now go to the Tasmoda GitHub page and grab the latest sonoff.bin right here. Save this into the ESP Easy folder that you just opened. Now one more thing to download if you don't have it already, and that's this real simple serial interface called Termite. So here's the latest version. Download the exe file. and then install it. Now it's time to plug in our D1 Mini to one of the USB ports on the computer. Okay, now go back to our ESP Easy Mega folder and select flash ESP8266.exe, aka flash easy. When it pops up, it should have the COM port already selected. Then under firmware, you wanna select sonoff.bin and then hit flash. And that's what it looks like when it's working. And there we go. All done. Flash complete. There are a couple different ways that you can get all the settings that you need into Tasmoda. What I like to do is use Termite. If you're using Tasmoda a lot, I'm going to recommend that you set up a backlog command that will input your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password and your MQTT broker information. Save it somewhere handy. So every time you flash a new device with Tasmoda, you can just plop that backlog command into Termite and it'll connect your new device to your network and to your MQTT broker. For this project, I'll do the same thing that I've been doing for you for a lot of projects recently. I'll give you a backlog command that'll set up all the things that you need in Tasmoda. Just copy it and paste it into Termite and you're done. The other way to configure Tasmoda is to get on a Wi-Fi enabled device, look for a new Wi-Fi network called Sonoff something something, connect to it, and then put in your Wi-Fi SSID and password. After that, it'll connect to your network. Go to your router, find the IP address, put that IP address into your browser, and it'll open up the Tasmoda main page. In Tasmoda, we're gonna set the module type to generic. The pins we're gonna use for relays are D1, D2, and D8. And then we're gonna use D5 for the temperature sensor. If you're a barbarian, like me, and you still use Fahrenheit, instead of Celsius, 
then go into the console and type set option 8 1. It's also going to be really important that these relays don't activate when we don't intend them to. So while we're in the console, we're going to type switch retain 1 and power retain 1. Those are also in the backlog command, so if you use the backlog command, you don't need to do any of it here. For more information about why those retain commands are important, check out Rob's video on retaining MQTT messages. Very important information. Now it's time for the wiring. On these relay modules, D1 is the control pin. They also need 5 volts and ground. The rest of these holes are just here because these are made to fit on top of or underneath a D1 mini as a shield. You can get other relay modules that are configured differently. For this thermostat that's running my HVAC unit, I'm going to use the D1 relay for the fan, the D2 relay for the air conditioning, and the D8 relay for the furnace, and then the temperature sensor on D5. You'll need 5 volts and ground for all the relays, and you can either use 3 volts or 5 volts if you have this particular temperature sensor. Just for convenience, I'm going to use 5 volts. You can power this whole thing with a micro USB connector or you can run 5 volts directly from your power supply to this shared 5 volt connection. On a typical HVAC unit, at least here in the US, you're going to have four wires. Red is going to be the common. That's going to go to the middle pole of all the relays. Making red the common is a little bit confusing. I don't know why they did it that way. The green wire is for the fan, the yellow wire is for the AC, and the white wire is for the furnace. Each of those wires goes on a normally open pole for one of the relays. Once you've got it all connected, go to the Tasmoda user interface and check that all the relays are functioning and that you can see your temperature reading. If that's all good, it's time to do our home assistant setup. You need to create a switch entry for each of the relays. These are simple MQTT switches, so the format is going to look the same as all the other switches we've set up when using Tasmoda. The important part here is that you get the right topics for each switch, and the only thing that's really unique is the number after the word power. Now with a thermostat, you're going to need at least one temperature sensor. If you already have a temperature sensor on something else in your house, like maybe a camera, you don't necessarily need a temperature sensor on this thermostat. If you do include a new temperature sensor, like I'm doing, then you'll also need a sensor entry that'll look like this. The temperature from this sensor will get updated every time Tasmoda publishes to the Tele topic. By default, Tasmoda will publish to the Tele topic every five minutes. To shorten that time, go into the Tasmoda console and type tele period and then the number in seconds of how often you want it to refresh. I think the lowest you can go is 10. So I set my tele period to 10. That way I'll get a new temperature reading every 10 seconds. Now I've got a few different temperature sensors in the house, mostly coming off of our Blink cameras. I want to average all of those temperatures, so I'm going to use a min max sensor entry. And it looks like this. Under Entity IDs, I just list the temperature sensors that I want to include in this average. Simple as that. The next step is to set up the basic thermostat. To do that, we use the Home Assistant Climate component. The platform is Generic Thermostat. Then we give it a name. The heater is the switch that this thermostat entry is going to control. Now unfortunately, as of right now, each climate entry can only control one switch. So if you have heat, and air conditioning, we're actually going to need to set up two climate entries. This first one will be for the heat, the next one will be for the AC. For the target sensor, I'm going to point it at my min max sensor to get the average temperature of the upstairs. Min and max just set limits on the thermostat. Min cycle duration will specify a period of time that you want the unit to run every time it's triggered to turn on. In this example, it'll run for 15 minutes every time it turns on before it turns back off again. That makes sense. Here you can set a target temperature and an away temperature. There'll be a button in the user interface that you can switch to easily set this thermostat to away mode. Of course, we'll also use that for automations. The entry for the air conditioning looks pretty much the same. Of course, the target temperature and the away temperature are different. And then at the bottom, you have to put AC mode true so that it knows that it's an air conditioner. I think that's everything we need for the configuration.yaml. As you probably know, YAML is very unforgiving. And that's a lot of YAML we just typed. So go back and double check that you got everything right. And if you think you did, save it, then go to Home Assistant, run the configuration checker, and if it checks out okay, restart Home Assistant. When it comes back up, you'll see two new climate entities. With your D1 Mini and your relays still plugged in, you can test it out here in the user interface. 
make sure everything's working. If you really want a Nest-like thermostat interface, there's a really nice looking custom card for Lovelace. If you never heard of Lovelace, that's the new user interface for Home Assistant. The thermostat card is one of the custom cards. So to get it, we need to go to GitHub and download the repository, extract it, then copy thermostat-card.js into your www folder in Home Assistant. That's going to require that you have Samba set up. But again, this whole thing is assuming that you already have Home Assistant set up. So if any of these steps seem confusing to you, go back and check out one of the other videos. Once you've got that thermostat-card.js file copied into your www folder, you need to add these two lines to the top of your ui-lovelace.yaml file. This custom card is a module, not a JS. That stumped me for a while, but now it won't stump you. You're welcome. Now decide where you want this thermostat card to show up in your Lovelace interface. I'm going to put mine on the picture entity that contains all the stuff on our second floor. This is what the entries look like. Use style to locate it in the right place and width if you want to change the size. Got it? Good. Now we need to make a few automations. The first automation is to make sure that our air conditioning and our furnace don't ever run at the same time. And we're also going to add a second action so that anytime the air conditioning or the furnace is on, the fan will be on also. You'll still be able to run just the fan, but you'll never be able to run the AC or the heater without the fan. These two automations are really critical. You don't want to skip these or you could damage your HVAC unit. And that would be bad. Really bad. These next couple automations are optional, but these are the ones that are really going to make our thermostat more smarter. This first automation is going to set both the air conditioning and the furnace to the away mode whenever my phone and my wife's phone are not detected at home for more than 24 hours. This is our little vacation safety net. If we leave the house and forget to put the thermostats into away mode, this automation will take care of it for us. That might save me enough to stay on vacation an extra day. These next two automations are schedule based. They're going to adjust the temperature based on the month of the year and the time of day to let the house get warmer at night and cooler in the day during the summer. The trigger is the time of day. And then the condition is an or condition, which will include all the months that I consider summer. If you're in Chile or Antarctica, or maybe even Australia, you're going to want to change this. These numbers five through nine represent the months May through September. And then the action is climate set temperature, set the entity ID, and then the temperature. And the second automation works the same way, except in the morning, it sets the temperature lower. So we have a nice cool house in the summer during the day. I will admit, if you're going to make a bunch of schedules using YAML like this, it's going to get pretty cumbersome pretty fast. Fortunately, there are a couple tools you can use to make these kinds of schedules a lot easier to work with. One is a YAML based app for app daemon called Heedy. Heedy lets you write a schedule like the one I just showed with just a couple lines of YAML instead of like 20. The other tool is a node red thermostat created by Pete Scargill. If you don't know who he is, you ought to check out his blog like today. I haven't mastered either of these myself yet, so I can't give you a detailed explanation yet. But when I get comfortable with them, we'll come back to this topic and I'll show you how to use them. There's a good chance that you'll figure it out before I do. And then you can teach me. The final step, finally, is to install our Smartio stat. Smarty stat? Smarto stat? Still working on the name. To install my thermostat, I bought one of these switch boxes, cut a hole the size of the switch box out of the drywall, and then got a blank faceplate, cut out just enough of it for the temperature sensor to poke through. When I finally stuffed everything in there and mounted that faceplate, it looked pretty good. I got two thumbs up from the missus. Can't ask for more than that. As I said before, in most houses with an HVAC unit, you're going to have a red wire, a green wire, a white wire, and a yellow wire. The red is going to be attached to the common pole of the relays, and the other colors are going to go to the normally open contacts. Some systems may also have a blue wire that'll be carrying 20 something volts from your HVAC unit to the thermostat. Unfortunately for me, that wasn't there. So I'm powering mine with a micro USB cable poked through the backside of the wall. Not the most elegant solution, but it'll work. Of course, you better check the wiring in your system before you really connect anything. 
Open up your AC furnace and look at where the different colored wires are attached. Get out your voltmeter and test them if you need to. When you've got it all wired up, it's time for the final test. On the outer ring of the Lovelace thermostat image, it shows the current temperature and the target temperature. If you adjust the target temperature in the climate entity in the Home Assistant interface, it will adjust that target temperature in the Lovelace thermostat image and vice versa. Well, that's it. We now have a thermostat that we can control from anywhere, anytime we want. It'll interact with all of our smart home devices through Home Assistant, especially presence detection and we can set up custom schedules. Beautiful. You can get all these parts from Amazon for about $20. Okay, technically about $28, but you also get two D1 minis and two temperature sensors for that price. Or if you don't mind waiting a month or so, you can get the same parts from Banggood or AliExpress for about $12. Now our house is a bit of a special situation. There's probably no use showing you in this video since it's not gonna really apply to very many people. But if you wanna see how I did my system, I'll talk about it in the next live stream. If you missed the stream, don't worry, it'll stay available so you can watch it later. Speaking of live streams, I try to do one at least weekly, usually on Sunday. I try to alternate the time to accommodate people on different sides of the planet. If you want to get an alert when the live stream starts, click the little bell. If you need help or just want to chat in between streams, go to the Facebook page or Discord. And there's always Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to support my early retirement fund, there's Patreon. Thanks for your support. And a special big thanks to everybody who helps out on Facebook and Discord, answering other people's questions and just lending a hand. There is absolutely no way that I could do all of this by myself. So thanks a bunch, guys. Well, that's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.